One thing I hope you've learned in this course is that there are sometimes different ways of achieving the same goal, but there are rarely a huge number of different ways. Instead, there are often a few common patterns that get applied over and over again. For example, if you're going to accumulate some result from a recursive function, there are a couple of different ways to do it. One we just saw is to always return the accumulation so far, and so it's the return value of the recursive function that's keeping track of what you want to return in the end. Another option is to initialize some accumulation to zero or an empty list, and then populate it as you go. Here's a different template for the same problem. And it turns out that all the analysis that I did before, looking at an example, jotting down the sub-goals that I needed to solve in order to solve the whole problem, are just as relevant to this template as to the original template that we looked at before. It's just that sometimes the details of the implementation are done in a different way. It's still the case that I somehow track the largest ancestor by introducing a helper function. It's still the case that I have an if statement that implements this same comparison. Is the current node's label larger than any of the ancestor labels? Incrementing the total count is different. Here, we're explicitly incrementing some variable n that's part of bigs. We still need some place to say that the root label is always larger than its ancestors. And now we can start filling in some code. A dot label greater than x is the right way of expressing what I wanted to express about nodes and max ancestors given the template that I have available. And again, one way to get the recursion started is to call f on t with some value that happens to be less than t's label. Now, in this version, f doesn't return anything. And so it would not make sense to return f of t because that would just return none. Instead, we're calling f for the side effect of incrementing n each time I see a node that has the property I want. Now, whether it has the property I want or not, I have to keep looking at all the branches because I have to explore all the nodes. And in this version, it would be very important to make a note that x is supposed to be the maximum value of any ancestor label so far, which would help me figure out how to compute that maximum value when I make the recursive call. I recurse on b, and the maximum value, which is either whatever the maximum was before, or the new label, if a dot label is larger than x. And what's missing here is just a piece of Python syntax, a non-local statement to say that assignment statements within f are allowed to change n, which is in an enclosing scope.